Hello, Accelerated Math 67 students. We are starting Module 6, and this is going to be Lesson 1. Um, module 6 is the last module that includes 6th grade standards, and then we'll be moving on to 7th grade standards, so very exciting. And Module 6 is working with um, statistics and data analysis. And so the first lesson that we're going to be looking at is called Understanding Distribution understanding distribution, okay? And here is our notes page. Um, I don't want you to get overwhelmed or sad, but we do have a lot of notes with this because there's a lot of information that you need to understand about statistics and data analysis. And the biggest part is understanding the graphs and how they work and what is the data that we'll be looking at. Okay, so understanding distributions, our goal. Today we will learn how to identify different types of data and how to use them. The question that I want you to think about while we're working through this lesson is, what are the two types of data? Okay, things to remember. Now, some of you may have previous knowledge of this, and so that's why I called it a things to remember. Some of you may never have heard of this at all, so this would actually be a things to know for you. So keep in mind that when we're working through today's lesson. Statistics is a type of math that allows people to understand things based on data. There are two types of questions used to identify data. They are called statistical questions and non-statistical questions. Okay, so one of the sixth grade standards is, is that you have to know the difference between a statistical question and a non-statistical question. A statistical question is a question that obtains data of a set of given information. So when you um, ask the question, you're gonna get data back as the answer. That's what a statistical question is. If you don't get any data back from it, then you're not really learning anything about it from a data point of view, so that would mean that it's not a statistical question. So a non-statistical question is a question that does not provide information about data. So either you get something about your data or you don't. If you get something and it's statistical, if you don't get anything about your data, it's non-statistical, okay? You have to collect data to answer the question. If you do not collect any data, then the question is not statistical. It's pretty um, self-explanatory if you can wrap your mind around it. All right, so here's an example. We have to decide if this is statistical or not statistical. Here's an example of the different types of questions. Jerome, a sixth grader at Roosevelt Middle School, is a huge baseball fan, okay? He loves to collect baseball cards. He has cards of current players and of players from past baseball seasons. With his teacher's permission, Jerome brought his baseball card collection to school. Each card has a picture of a current or past Major League Baseball player, along with information about the player. When he placed his cards out for the other students to see, they asked Jerome all sorts of questions about his card. Some asked, what is Jerome's favorite card? What is the typical cost of the card in Jerome's collection? For example, what is the average cost of the card? Are more of Jerome's cards for different players or for past players, current players or past players? And which card is the newest card in Jerome's collection? Okay, so our job now as mathematicians is to figure out which questions are statistical. Okay, so going back up to the top, what is Jerome's favorite card? Now think about that for a minute. Is that question gonna give us data? Does it have anything to do with a whole bunch of kids or is it just affecting one kid? What is Jerome's favorite card? If you said it's only one kid, you're correct. So if it's one kid, are we receiving any data about it? The answer is no. So this first question right here, we're gonna say it's non-statistical. So NS for non-statistical. Okay, what is the typical cost of the card in Jerome's collection? For example, what is the average cost of each individual card? So if he has a lot of cards, could there be a lot of cost? The answer is yes. If there's a lot of cost, is that a lot of data? The answer is yes. So if there's more than one answer and there's a lot of data, that's considered a statistical question because you're gathering data, okay? Are more of Jerome's cards for current players or for past players? Are more of Jerome's cards for current players or for past players? 
So think about it. If you answer that question, you're going to say pass. Does that give you a lot of data, or does it only tell you one thing? You are correct. It only tells you one thing. So I would say this one is non-statistical because it doesn't really give you any data. Okay, next one. Which card is the newest card in Jerome's collection? Okay, again, is it giving you data or is it just giving you one answer? Which card is the newest card in Jerome's collection? I would say non-statistical because it's not giving you any data. It's just telling you one thing. Okay, so hopefully you can see, sometimes they can be tricky trying to figure them out. But the best information that I can say coming back from it is if there is more than one possible answer, then you know it's statistical because it's, you're collecting data. If there's only one answer, that's not any data. All it is is, okay, here's the answer. There's nothing to plot. There's nothing to analyze. There's nothing to look at. Okay? So this is how we identify whether they're statistical or non-statistical. That's one of your standards in sixth grade. Okay? All right. So the next stuff that we have to talk about is the data from statistical questions is organized in two different categories. Okay? And the categories are called numerical data and categorical data. Okay? Numerical data is data that uses numbers. Categorical data is data that uses words. Okay? Now, I'm pretty sure that probably all of you have seen some kind of graph in your past math experience. Okay? And what we're talking about when we say numerical data or categorical data is on your graph, does your graph show numbers or does it show words? And that's how you tell the difference between numerical and categorical. Which is which? You conduct a survey about the following things. Decide what type of data each survey is obtaining. So if you're determining the eye color on a graph, what would go on the x-axis of the graph? Different colors, right? So if there's different colors on the x-axis, what would this be? This would be categorical because it would say blue, brown, green, black, all of those different colors along the bottom of the graph, and so that makes it categorical data. Okay? Favorite TV show? Again, what would be on the x-axis? Um, let's say, what do you guys like? We are we we be bears. Um, go T Titans go. Um, SpongeBob. Well, all again, all of those are words, names of shows. So that would be categorical again. Okay. If we had the amount of snowfall in Flagstaff that Flagstaff has received this school year, the amount, then we're talking about numbers: six inches, twelve inches, one foot. So those are all numbers. So this would be numerical data. Do you see the difference? I hope you're starting to see the difference. Okay. Um, high temperatures in the month of February. Again, we're talking about 55 degrees, 67 degrees, 32 degrees. Those are all numbers. So that would be numerical data. Okay. So again, remembering that there's two types of data. They are either numerical data or they are categorical data. They're either being shown with numbers or they're being shown with words. Okay. All right, ways to organize data. Now, we've been talking about this a little bit just in the questions that I've been asking you. But the ways that we organize data is through graphs, charts, ways to show it off. Okay? Once you have your data, you need a way to show it off. There are three types of displays that we will look at. There are the dot plot. Okay, so this is very important. We need to know what a dot plot is. A frequency table and a histogram. Those are the sixth grade requirements that you need to be able to tell. A dot plot, a frequency table, and a histogram. Okay, so let's go into that. A dot plot is a graph that uses a horizontal line and dots to display the data. So if we have pets in our class, let's say we did a survey and we said, what are your pets that you own? And this is what it came out with. We have two kids who own rabbits. We have four kids who own dogs. We have six kids who own cats. We have one kid who owns a horse. We have three kids who own a bird. We have zero kids that own a mouse. We have two kids that own fish. And one kid who has other. So first of all, not to interject, but yes, interject, because we just learned some information. What kind of data is this? 
Is it numerical or categorical? You should be able to answer that question. Notice that on a dot plot, we have an x-axis, that's the bottom. The words written underneath the x-axis represent the pet choices, and the dots tell you how many. And it has to be in a dot in order for it to be a dot plot. In fifth grade, you guys learned about line plots, and they used x's. Okay? So a line plot is very similar to a dot plot. The biggest difference is, is the way you produce your data symbol, and our data symbol happens to be a dot. The most important thing you have to remember about reading a dot plot is you have to read the key because the key will tell you what each dot represents because it could be five kids. We don't know. So you have to read the key and the key will tell you what each dot stands for. Okay? All right. Frequency table. A frequency table is a table that shows the number of responses for each data point. And so you're looking at type of pet, the tally tells you the number, and then the frequency is the actual numerical value. So dog, it says that there are 12 tally marks next to dog, so I know that there are 12 kids who have one. Cat has seven, goldfish has six, budgie has three, hamster has two, lizard has one, snake has one, and rabbit has three. So frequency tables are very, very helpful tools for helping us understand data. So you're going to work with those a lot too. Okay. Um, the next one is a histogram, okay? And the histogram is a graph that uses horizontal and vertical axes to displace data placed into intervals. Now, we've talked about intervals before, and as we get closer to working hands-on with the histograms, we'll talk about it again. But intervals are sets of numerical values so that every data piece has a place to belong. And the intervals have to be equally spaced. That means they have to be the same size. So if you notice, 0 to 5 actually has 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It has six numerical data points represented. 6 to 10, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 has 5. 11 to 15, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 16 to 20, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So you're seeing that your intervals are evenly spaced so that every place has a spot. So we have the intervals down at the bottom, we have the number of people on the y-axis, and then you draw your chart according to your data. Okay. There are some important things to remember about histograms. The shape of the histogram. The shape of the histogram tells you information about the data. There are different shapes, and they are called symmetrical or skewed. The reason why the shape of the diagram is um, so important on a histogram is it gives you a trend. So if the shape happens to be a big blob in the middle and it looks equally dispersed, then you know that there are equal amounts of data on either side of the highest point. If it's um, moved to one side or the other, that's called skewed, and it tells you that the data has been skewed a certain direction, and we'll go into that in just a minute. Okay, so symmetrical shape, this shape shows that the data is evenly dispersed on both sides of the center of the data. So the center is the highest point on your graph. So up here, this is a histogram, the highest point of your graph sits right here. And then if it's symmetrical, then it's going to go down in the same pattern on both sides. This one is kind of symmetrical, but not exactly symmetrical. This one is very symmetrical because here's your highest point. And if you notice, if we were to cut this graph, fold it in half directly on top of each other, both sides of the graph would match up um, completely, and so that makes it symmetrical, okay? Skewed shape, this shape shows the data to be uneven and dispersed on one side or the other. So here's a picture of a skewed data source, okay? And so we notice on this one that the trends happen to be over here on the highest part. So if you're looking at this as a graph, and we said age groups and years, and this is 0 to 5, 6 to 10, 11 to 15, 16 to 20, 21 to 25, and 26 to 30, well, we would see that the ages of people who have the, sa the favorite amount of candy, it would be that the highest number of candy lovers would be in the age group of 21 to 25, because that's the highest point. Whereas on this one, it would say the younger kids. So the younger kids love the candy the most. So 
skewed left means the data is skewed towards the smaller values. This is skewed left. So it means it starts low on the left and then raises toward the end. Skewed right means the data is skewed towards the larger values. So that means that over here are the larger values. So that means that it, it was really high here, but then it's got a longer value on the higher values or the higher values of the data. Please do not panic. We are going to practice with these. You just need to be familiar with the language. So skewed left, it looks like that. Skewed right, it looks like this. Symmetrical looks like it's exactly even. If you were to fold it in half, it would look exactly the same. Okay? All right. So that was a ton of information, I know. Um, but I think that once you get to start playing with all of this stuff, you're going to see how much fun it can be, and we'll have lots of charts and data that we can look at. Um, our goal for today, today we will learn how to identify different types of data. We did that, right? Statistical, non-statistical questions, numerical, categorical, and then how to graph them. Um, what are the two types of data that you learned today? And it doesn't have anything to do with these questions. These questions just help you get it. What are the two types of data? I'll give you a hint. It was on my second page. All right, that's all that I have for you. I'm sorry that the video was long. That's a lot of information, and I think we're going to be excited to get going. Okay, I will talk to you soon. Have a good one. Bye.